Good morning, Jew. Good morning, Jew. How'd How you doing? You? Good, Jew. Quite well, thank Quite you. Well. I'm, I'm Heather Gold. I'm going first. It's a first. It's a first. It's a first, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone of all genders. I'm Heather Gold here in Oakland on a lovely day. And you? I am Katie Halper in uh, New York City on a lovely day also as well. <laughs> No, no, bring it closer. It'll make... Like they always say. Bring it closer, Ugh. Katie. Ew, I actually hate They're that. much better. Now that um, I can hear you much differently. Oh, okay. Uncircumcised microphones in our faces. Yeah. These um, uncircumcised microphones in our faces, by the way, kind of remind me of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's a flaccid thing hanging there. You're just waiting for it to pop up like an erection. It's into in the your background. Face, into your space. It's a dormant erection. It's permanently there. You can't get away from it. If you're a Jew, you're stuck with it. And you don't even want to be stuck with it. No, you don't. But we feel like we can't avoid it anymore. It would be this week. responsible as morning journalists. Uh, we want to give you a Shonda, a Oof. Shonda of the week. A professor and researcher for a right-wing Israeli think tank said the other day that the only way to deter Palestinian suicide bombers is through, just like the Torah says, threatening uh. to rape his sister. He literally said that um, during an no, interview. Now, I should clarify, Katie doesn't mean threatening to rape the sister of the professor. Sorry, yes, this <laughs> professor. Contrary to popular belief, the, the professor was not calling for rape of his own sister. He's Mordechai Kader. He yeah. said in an interview, You have to understand the culture in which we live. Uh, terrorists like those who kidnap the children and kill them, the only thing that deters them is this. They know that their sister or their mother will be raped in the event that they're caught. What can you do? It's, that's the culture in which we live. Uh, what can uh, you I'm not ta- talking about what we should or shouldn't what? do. I'm talking about the facts. The only thing that deters a suicide bomber is the knowledge that if he pulls the trigger, blows himself up, his sister will be raped. That's all. That's the only thing that would bring him back home in order to preserve what? his sister's honor. Has he spent a lot of time with, like, Palestinians obsessing over their sister's virginity? It sounds like he's, he Hymans. spent a lot of time thinking about it. It's us- It reminds me of uh, the, like, right-wing preachers who want to rail against homosexuality and they have so much like Marcus Bachman he's got so much detail oh on the thing so you're like you've given this a lot yeah. of thought or on the other end you have these things where fathers you know in purity balls they marry their daughters that's really healthy they're basically promising their virginity to their fathers disgusting they do happen in the south though it's we, not enough just to have incest we need a party for yeah, it incest well. party incest celebration Celebrate incest, come on. Hey, yeah, yeah, great. Um, So he's a Shonda. I think it's pretty obvious. And what what was interesting to me is that Jews so often present themselves, especially in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, as the kind of enlightened voice of reason. They often use their Israel's treatment of of gay people as kind of a... No, no, let's go back and something you just said, because I disagree with that already. I don't think Jews do this. I think some Israelis do this. I think some Israelis, I think a lot of Jews do. I think, okay, we have a little problem. The problem is that the Jews who are vocal, and I I sound like an anti-Semite when I say this, but the Jews who are vocal and powerful, like APAC, which is literally a lobby, they have a very specific agenda and perspective, which is one that I don't agree with at all. I shouldn't have said the Jews, that's true. But I think that a lot of... Generally, when you use the term the Jews... Anything else that comes out of your mouth, if it's not, if it's about this Israeli-Palestinian conflict, is a problem. Like, right. if you want like a guideline about how to talk about it, and hawkish you don't really Zionists want to Hawkish Zionists is what I said, and hawkish Zionists. Let's call them H- HZs from now on. HZs to me. HZs. What about Haza? Hazais? That sounds Israeli. Hazais. It's, maybe it means something in Hebrew. Hazai. 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 What about Hazarai? Hazarai. What is that again? You don't know Hazarai. Chazarai is crap. It's Yiddish for crap. But what I was saying is that often Chazai will use Israel's, what they consider to be a more enlightened tradition. They're the only democracy in the Middle East. We treat gay people well. We allow pride. We are very oh, careful when we bomb. It's we are bomb. It's a we are such first. surgical. We give a warning. That's we're the other careful thing, the killing. We, we, what's that? The I, they we're overlapping. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because we're Jews. So you, you go. The warnings, they're like, you must leave your house. I don't know where you're going to go. You will be homeless. But I'm doing you a favor, telling you to leave house, and then they will drop a bomb. They're very helpful. Yeah. Thanks. If you are outside the middle of the road, and I've become German. German. I know. God. 
Well, Damn Freudian, it. major Freudian, identifying with the, you know, No, presser. it's the back of the throat pronunciation right, I thing. I could be French as well, exactly. it's a little back there. Exactly. We should be it's a character who is a schizophrenic and three different characters. See how close is we want. And the Israeli. And just really is like, go, go, middle of the road, just go hang go out and, uh, go to where your, we bomb. Go to Mustafa's house. Where are you supposed to go? Where are you supposed to go? Yeah. They're so, shot into this little Frishtink and a piece of land. And then, yes. And it's then, even smaller than a little Frishtink and a piece of land. It's Israel. Right. That is it's Israel. double Frishtink and a small. Frishtink and a squared. Technically, yes. is what the, ge I think, the geographical specification You know what? Is. Here's the thing. Someone needs to make the Palestinian case in Yiddish. Don't be a schmuck. Don't be a putz. Give them a bissel of land. Hey, we what just did it. What can you do? I'm stuck. I have nowhere to go. I'm in this place. It's the same thing. It's Look, so you're saying, you're saying this right-wing position is always full of telling you how reasonable and careful and how... Right. How Civilized. How restrained. Right, exactly. I'm restrained in my right. murdering. The irony is that in his, exactly, the irony is that in his trying to portray Palestinians as these extremists, as these uncivilized kind of beasts who cannot be stopped by anything but the threat of rape of their sister or mother, he is, of Wait. course, being fairly beastie himself. Beastie is nice way to put but, it. Yeah, on a good day. It's an understatement. Speaking of mentions, Governor Deval Patrick, he's our this mention is of this the week. Week's, this, this is this week's mention of the week. week. And he wants to host immigrants from across the border. And right on. Right on, right? He gave a speech and he said, My inclination is to remember what happened when a ship full of Jewish children tried to come to the United States in 1939 Ooh. and the United States turned them away and many of them went to their deaths in Nazi concentration camps. Ooh. I think we are a bigger hearted people than that as Americans and certainly as residents of Massachusetts. Now, getting from there to a practical solution, I have not done yet. I'm trying to think that through. So his heart's in the right place. He wants to welcome these people who are, are fleeing for their lives. Who are the refugees? Uh, Mexican and Central American. We want to give a shout out because this is oh, the yeah, first yeah. and only really appropriate use of that Holocaust yes. story we've ever heard. Deval Patrick. It's Yes. It's a double. It's a double winner. Yeah. So first of all, do, 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 if you want to talk about the Holocaust, how to effectively use the Holocaust as an in an analogy, do, do, which do, almost do, never do. happens. Never. They're usually using it to call Obama a Nazi. Second part of it that's amazing. Deval Patrick knows the thing that usually only Jews will cite. Yes. It's very rare for someone very who's true. not Jewish to say, you know, I'm going to acknowledge that the U.S. Under didn't FDR. accept. And the people, there was no right. big support here to let Jewish refugees come here for the Second deaths. World War. They were sent back to their deaths. It is a kind of, you broke it, you fix it. You being the United States government, we really helped destabilize these nations. At Honduras, we didn't do anything when there was a coup. We basically let the coup happen. We wouldn't declare it a coup. Now there's the violence has gone up incredibly. We totally screwed over Nicaragua and El Salvador. Um, he's very handsome, this guy, too, by the way. It's Val Patrick? Yeah. Are, is he on a, is he high in your list of boyfriends? Yeah. He's interested in politics, Katie. He is, and he's passionate, and he's a star. He knows his history. We could do a lot well, for black Jewish relations, he and I. Yeah? Are you ready? I'm ready. You could be a political risk for him. I may be. Or I could make a very good first lady of Boston. <laughs> of Massachusetts, I mean. Sorry. You mean so since Kitty Dukakis, they need another Jewish first lady of Massachusetts? Kitty Dukakis was Jewish? Yes, you never knew Kitty Dukakis was Jewish? And, and of course Michael Dukakis is the Jewiest looking Greek I've ever seen. He was the biggest nebbish in the history of American he really politics. Was, yeah. He outnebbed Woody Allen. Yeah, he may have. And then he got on the tank with that thing that had very heartwarming story is that there's a social media campaign rocking the social media. Jews and Arabs refuse to be enemies and it's various The longest viral yeah, hashtag. Yeah. They're like, we want four hundred character hashtag. Yeah, it's a little bit long. But you know what? That's this great symbol of how complex and complicated it is. It, it also proves the power that people are still sending stuff out even with a hashtag that long. It's true, you're right. They have pictures of various interfaith couples and then products. You mean Arab, Israeli or Arab, Arab Jewish Israeli couples? Israeli or Arab Jewish couples. Well, if they would hook up, maybe we wouldn't have exactly. so much of a problem. That's why Maybe we need to make PSAs for them. Maybe they need dates. Maybe they all need some dates. They need inter They need like a they safe need place outside the, the the tribe. That's to live to yeah. date to begin with. Right. How can they? How are the Palestinians going to date Jews when they don't have a home to invite them over to? 
How are you going to have like a hot hookup when you're like, I'm calling just a minute. I uh, have to leave the house. I've been told we have to get out right. because I, the bomb yeah. You're not. You're, I, why are you? Why were you? But like, I'll pick you up in uh, yeah. four days. It'll take me that long to get, get to, the, to check the checkpoint. Point. It's like, why were you late? Oh, I'm really sorry. I had to evacuate my house. You always have to evacuate your house. God. It's like the dog ate my homework. That's the Israelis bombed my house. Time. Exactly. Um, you know, I have a, my mom's cousin dated an Israeli, uh, a Palestinian. She's Israeli. She lives in Jerusalem. And she dated a, a Palestinian, and then the wall went up, and they had to break up. Uh, sometimes, when you're, you know, don't know where to stand on an issue that's complicated, like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you look to people who who have a lot of expertise and, and right. a nuanced point of view. And so, mm -hmm. I, of course, look to Robert Zimmerman, brother of George Zimmerman, murderer of Trayvon Martin. He, I follow him on Twitter. Well, thank that's why. God, poo 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 is not Jewish. Poo poo poo. Right, Zimmerman, the father is German. Everyone remember this. George Zimmerman, Robert Zimmerman, Robert Zimmerman Sr., not Jewish, Robert Zimmerman, he tweeted the he IDF. We have hit Hamas hard and we will continue to hit Hamas hard. Hashtag stand with Israel. Now, I don't think Israel or the IDF were thrilled that the brother of the murderer of Trayvon Martin was endorsing their campaign. George Zimmerman didn't use any restraint. He used disproportionate force and he attacked an innocent armed with nothing but Skittles and a hoodie and an iced tea. So it's like Israel is do using really disproportionate force to attack a lot of civilians. So I kind of think they're like the George Zimmerman of... It's just like the right wing, I want to kill people attitude of like, do some force. And yeah. it's the, it's and there's the, a I lot wanna... of insecurity like George Zimmerman. It's a, it's a I want to be butcher, butcher idea. Right. Are these good for Jew the Jews? Let's see. The first topic. So is this Shonda good for the Jews? That goes without saying. Shonda's by definition are bad for the Jews unless they can wake certain Jews up, some Jews, Hazai, into realizing that it's not all good Jews versus all evil Palestinians. Maybe that's a good thing. That's the silver lining. Deval Patrick, great for the Jews because we get to set point to a great analogy. Remember, we're giving him the award for most for appropriate best, use of the appropriate use yeah. of the Holocaust analogy. Best, best Holocaust reference yeah. in a non -holo in a non Holocaust situation. Yes, kosher non -Holo German Holocaust. Kosher Holocaust use. Kosher Holocaust use. We're giving Fair you a morning Jew kosher Holocaust usage. Yes. All right. Well, this was a great episode. I felt like I learned a lot. Uh, and I will see you next week. And Dunkin' Donuts is happy place.